Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dog on Positive Way. I'm your host and dog trainer, Maria Ryan, and I cannot wait to get into it. We have so much to talk about today, it's crazy. I want to update you a little tidbit on uh, the animal cruelty charge against the dog trainer, Nikki Camarello, here in Florida. Um, I also want to talk about somebody who approached me to be a guest on the show. And, uh, you know, why I said no. Can you actually guess why I would say no to somebody? Um, and I want to talk a little bit about animal rescue and relation to the wildfires that are happening right now in California and in um, Alberta, Canada, at Jasper National Park. So let's get into it straight away. All right. So before I get completely into it, I always forget to say it at the top. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave reviews on Spotify. Leave reviews everywhere. Uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, I am now on, um, I've got Facebook. I've got uh, TikTok and YouTube and also Instagram. Follow me everywhere. Leave reviews everywhere you can. I really want to get this information out to as many people as possible. Uh, this is completely free. Um, and this is really, really good information that you're getting. And let's talk about this uh, supposed dog trainer. Okay. Uh, let me get to where I wanted to start with her. So she turned herself in on the 29th, which was yesterday. So I was looking up, let me see the arrest record. Here it is. Let me share this with you guys. So this is the arrest record. Um, I'm going to see if I can make it any bigger. She turned herself in. Okay. Um, and this just happened, uh, on the 17th on the 29th to 29th, which was yesterday was supposed to be her, uh, arraignment, but I'm not sure what happened with that. I looked up the court records, but it kind of took me in a circle. So I submitted for information from the county to see if I could get some more information about her. Um, but basically the second charge of animal cruelty was brought against her. They had the necropsy results on Flory. If you remember, I reported on that last week. If you didn't see that episode, Go back, listen, or listen and watch if you like. Um, but once that came out, I think she was like, oh, I better just turn myself in. So I was reading over this, and it says that, where is it, where is it, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. It says it's a misdemeanor. And that just kind of got me, because I was like, how is this just a misdemeanor? I don't understand. Let's see, where is it? This is... Here, out of county, here it is. Um, one count, misdemeanor. Um, and it says, on Wednesday, while stationed at the St. Lucie County Jail, Nick, Nikki Camerlengo entered the front lobby wanting to turn herself in an active, out of county. Okay, it was an out of county warrant. Interesting. I ran Nikki's Florida driver's license and confirmed the warrant through, I don't know if that doesn't say, Nikki was placed under arrest and booked into the St. Lucie County Jail. Her bond was posted at, I mean, I don't know if it was posted, but her bond was for um, 2,500. I can't remember where I read that. I read that somewhere. I don't know where, I don't remember. But um, so, okay, let's get back to what bothered me was the fact that this is one count of a misdemeanor. So I was like, how is this a misdemeanor? So I looked up the laws of animal cruelty laws in Florida. Let me share this with you guys so we can view it together and learn together. We are learning together. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Here's the statute. It's 828, section 12. Um, and it talks about, there's one, two, three, and we did go over this 
in one of the episodes a couple episodes ago um, and it really speaks about intent the intent of the person as far as what did they intentionally like right here number two a person who intentionally commits an act to any animal or a person who owns or has the uh, custody or control of an animal meaning that animal is with you um you know you've turned you're an, a dog owner you've turned your dog over to a groomer a trainer vet whatever um so that person now is in care custody and control of your animal uh, and fails to act, which results in the cruel death. Um, am I sharing this? If I'm not sharing this, I am sharing it. Yay. I remembered. Okay. Uh, in the cruel death or excessive or repeated infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering or causes the same to be done, commits aggravated animal cruelty and a felony of the third degree punishable as provided in this statute uh, or by a fine, not more than $10,000. Um, so I'm pretty sure because these animals did suffer and the necropsies did show um, the amount of bruising, uh, the brain bleed and um, that it was on um, both deaths was caused by blunt force trauma. That is intentional. There's there's no way around it. So maybe because she just turned herself in, like I don't know how they determine that stuff when you turn yourself in. Like what um what what is it that makes like she turned herself in? Why did they put that? Why didn't they put um it's fel fel felony? And if you want to say, well, it's because it's not proven. Well, I mean, nothing is proven. So misdemeanor or felony, like it's a freaking felony. So second, it's our second felony because there's a second dog that there's proof. There's other animals like we discussed. I think we said five, six, five or six that she killed and maybe four that she um, um, injured and severely injured. Okay. Not just, um, you know, like, Oh, I accidentally, whatever. I mean, I don't know how you could accidentally, whatever, but let me show you this. Also, I'm going to share this other tab. This is a legal inf info, um, tab. And Basically, what it's saying in here, which kind of helped me a little bit understand the difference, but generally, animal cruelty is a misdemeanor, but it is a third degree felony in the act or failure to act was intentional, or if the act, I apologize, if the act or failure to act was intentional and resulted in a cruel death or excessive, repeated, unnecessary pain and suffering. Uh, in addition to any other penalties, anyone guilty of intentionally injuring, injuring, mutilating, or killing an animal will have to go to a psychological counseling or anger management treatment in addition to pay a fine. Repeated offense and more serious types of cruelty can lead to prison time. I really hope that she has to do all of this. She should definitely serve prison time. Like, why not? Why shouldn't she serve prison time? I mean, you know, she killed animals. So I definitely think, oh, you're going to experience some live training. Well, not live because I'm not live, but there's a storm going on and Troy has been activated. I don't know if you guys can hear the storm. So uh, I might be doing a little redirecting, but getting back to the case, um, I really hope that she serves time. Uh, she absolutely should be forced to go to or required, whatever, to go to um, uh, anger management and psychological counseling, because obviously she's pissed off at something, whether I don't know what's wrong with her. Like, I don't know what happened to her or whatever. It's no excuse, but she definitely needs help. And it's a repeat offense. She is technically with the two dogs. She can be proved 
it can be proved that she killed them and they were in her care and custody and that it was um, intentional, um, blunt force trauma. It wasn't like, I don't know, like accident, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It was definitely intentional. So um, she should also pay a fine and stay in prison or go in prison. I don't know if she bonded out or not. So, okay, uh, we're going to move on from that. I wanted to touch base on very awesome that at least in the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic, there are not any uh, tropical storms or hurricanes. So that's cool for us here. Um, and I did want to talk about the fires that are happening out in um, California uh, that was started by that one moron. Uh, that was like, I'm going to, I don't know how the car was on fire. So supposedly, well, it's not supposed they're saying that there was a car on fire. People saw him. There was a little car on fire and he pushed the car over an embankment down the hill and it caught everything on fire, the brush around it. And that started this whole freaking fire. Um, this guy is going to be arraigned and all that junk, but what a psycho. Like, what the hell is wrong with people? I don't understand. I really don't get it. Um, but I just wanted to really go into a little bit of what happens with our animals, our domestic animals, and then the wildlife. Now, when I was uh, trained in um, um, disaster animal response training, wait, I'm trying to get rid of this. Let me see. I'm going to remove this. Okay, here we go. So when I was trained for, um, dis when uh, there was, it was called DARG, Disaster Animal Response Team, and we were trained for wildlife, but mostly domestic animals. And this was a training course that I took through at the SPCA, Largo SPCA in Pinellas County. It was a great course. It was very informative. Um, we got to go out. We didn't actually really completely work with, horses, but we were around them enough to, for them to demonstrate, you know, what you can do to get the larger animals out. Um, but most importantly, what they impressed upon us is that to not lock your barns, you know, your animals should be able to escape their enclosures. Um, we're talking about large breed animals now, uh, horses and pigs. And, um, I think a pig is large breed, maybe, I don't know. Um, donkeys, um, cows, all that, uh, leave the, let them have the ability to escape. Cause if they're locked in a barn, they're going to die. They're going to burn to death. Nothing, you know, there, there's no way for them to get out. So, um, and when they go out, at least during a hurricane, they will hide their front end to protect the front of their bodies. They'll go into brush and their butts and their tail ends are what's hanging out the back. Um, so they are more protected. They obviously can still get injured, but um, not as severe as like in their face or their eyes, uh, their neck and all that kind of stuff. So I find that very interesting. In addition to the fact that um, a lot of animals, I know dogs will bury themselves. They will dig a hole in the ground and bury themselves um, until a storm is passed. But now we're talking about wildfires and, you know, it's, it's really, they do escape. The wild animals do escape and they go into higher ground. But if you think about it, their forests, their homes are devastated just as the humans' homes are, you know? So that ecologically really messes things up. And if you think about it, to the down to a flower that gets you know pollinated by a bee and now it's it's gone that flower is gone so from the smallest like bears and elk to the tiniest like the insects salamanders newts etc um it all gets affected and um it's really sad i don't know what's going to happen with this guy it's great that they got him and they're going to charge him, but I don't know what ultimately will happen. I hope he stays locked up forever because he's a psycho. I'm sorry. 
some people just don't deserve to be free and walk among us because they're insane and their intention is to hurt people. Um, so, and I am not a benefit of the doubt giver person anymore because it's gotten me into trouble. So let's go here. I found a couple of videos. I wanted to show you guys this. Let's share this. How are we doing here? This is it. Yay, it's happening. Okay. All right. I was very curious about also domestic animals. So I found this video on YouTube. California, the largest wildfire of the year, the Park Fire continues to burn. Last week, as the flames grew, one owner in the danger zone had to evacuate and leave behind a family of Rottweilers after serious car troubles. That's when Trevor Skaggs stepped in. Skaggs is both a member of Butte County uh, Search and Rescue Team and the North Valley, Valley Animal Disaster Group as well, and he is also a BCSO pilot. Connor Smith went up in a chopper to find the pups and they were able to find them all alive and well. Skaggs was able to make uh, a safe, he was able to rescue them with these adorable puppies and get them returned to their owner. I hate that, um, that they had car trouble and wasn't able they weren't able to um whatchamacallit take them with that's really sad that is why it's important to um make sure you have a plan in place that encompasses everything encompasses any situation if you can i'm i'm not judging this person at all there's no way i'm judging them because shit happens in life really and you would never think oh that that is going to happen to you and even when you prepare for like everything life has a way of giving you that one little extra special thing that you totally didn't prepare for so it was awesome that the puppies got rescued and i'm really happy to hear that and that they were able to reunite with their owner so that's awesome um i was looking for more wildlife stories but i really wasn't able to find anything other than you know that most of these animals and you know wildlife will hide and take cover um and that you know it it is really the best that they can do as far as you know going up trees and really though they have to get out of the area i was watching this one video i don't know if I can find it again, no, I don't know where it is, but it showed the um, moose just out on like people's property because the you know wildfires pushed them out. So that's what I mean. Like the, the animals, there are casualties in wildfires with wildlife. I don't want anybody to think that that's not a possibility because that happens. Um, but also what happens is that animals naturally will instinctually um, revert back to, or not even revert back to, because they're wild animals. They will hide, they will run, they will escape, they will go elsewhere, whether it's higher ground or lower ground, whatever the situation is, they will be able to, most of them will be able to take care of themselves. But it's a whole nother situation um, when, you have situations where, you know, somebody needs help and they, or like the car breaks down with this person, with the puppies. So um, there are, I just wanted to show you guys this, not that I am out there, but I want to see, I want to share this with you. Let's see if I can get this. Um, let me see. I'm going to share. And... Yes. Okay. So this is the park fire. It's called the park fire. Is it sharing? Let's see. Let me see. Yes. Yay. Um, incident um, report basically, but I wanted to have these shelters up here. There's small animal shelters and then there's large animal shelters. 
So, and this is in Butte County and Tehama, Tehama County. Um, and so the large animal shelter is an equestrian park. Um, and they have, basically it looks like a bunch of parks. So, and then you cannot forget that there are wildfires happening in Alberta, Canada, and in, in Jasper. And uh, I'm sad that that's going on up there. Um, let me see. Where is it? Now, it, it is up in Jasper, and it is really devastating them up there, too. So we have a lot of fires happening and we have a lot of destruction going on. Mother Nature is totally pissed off and uh, it would be really nice if people weren't so mean and a little crazy and setting fires intentionally. So let's move on to... The next thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys today. So people are like, I'm going to leave this up while I talk about this. People have, uh, a couple people have reached out to me via email. They want to be on the show. So I'm like, awesome. There is one person that I am definitely going to have on the show um, that reached out to me. She has a book out and I'm going to check that out book out and um, have her on the show. She has a new book. So, and I'm going to do a giveaway on that. Uh, I just have to think of a contest for it. And um, somebody else, a dog trainer contacted me and I'm just going to share this with you guys because this, it, here's the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys. I sussed him out. Like there was something I knew he was not telling me. And I just, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, so I knew something was up, but let's just go into the email. Let me share this tab and I want to see. Yeah. Okay. So here's the email. Uh, let's see. Where does it start? So dear host of the dog on positive way. How are you? I am Ryan Wimpy, the owner of tip top. Uh, canine dog training. I've been a professional dog trainer since 2008 and our company has 18 locations in the USA. And I'm like, oh, red flag. It's a franchise. Uh, given our similar, similar passions and my extensive experience, I'm like, mm, I believe I'd be uh, making a compelling guest on your podcast. I can discuss various pro problems, including our topics, including dog training, do's and don'ts, utilizing electric collars effectively, emotional stories about changing the lives and dogs of their owners. Uh, to give you an idea of my communication, he sent me a link to a podcast, but it, it didn't work. Um, so I was like, all right. And I saw that. I just saw that utilizing the e-collar effectively. And I was like, all right, let's see. Uh, thank you for considering my proposal and keep up the excellent work on, with your podcast. So I said, um, wait, where is it? Here it is. Hi, uh, la la. Hi. Uh, hey, Ryan. Thank you for reaching out and your interest in being a guest on the show, The Dog on Positive Way. I always like to know more about my guests before. Uh, coming on the show, I spelled that wrong. I would like to find out more about you and what type of training methodologies you use and uh, you use when training dogs. Also, do you train any other animals? Um, let's see. Also, I did click on the link and there was an error. Yada, yada. Okay. So he wrote me back and he said, Hey there, thanks for your response. Here's a link to our website that will tell you a lot more about me. Of course, I went on to that before I even wrote him this email. But I'm like, there's nothing there that's talking about e-collar training 
there is nothing that is telling your basic, your everyday dog owner, danger, danger, run, run, okay? So I just wanted to be direct with him because here he goes. Wait, 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 wait. Here you go. Hey there. Okay, thanks for responding. Okay, here's a link. At Tip Top, we use neutral training tactics to give people opportunities to communicate more effectively with their fur babies over the years. Since 2008, we have seen some truly amazing transformations in the lives and lives improved. Here's some more background about me and our story. Uh, we only train dogs. Here's another podcast that I was featured on. I listened to part of the podcast. Like I gave it a good try, like a good like 10, 15 minutes while I was doing other stuff. And it is 100% an advertisement for tip top canine dog training uh, franchise, right? No, thanks. Um, and he didn't answer my question. Okay, look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so I said back to him. Uh, la, la, la. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for getting back to me. Oh, thanks for sending the links. I don't see anything definitive as far as what training methodologies you use. So I'm just going to be very direct with you. Do you use shock collars, pinch collars, alpha rolls? Question mark. Thank you, Maria. And I got, what did he say? No, hi, nothing. We use neutral e-collar training with praise. What the fuck is that? So you shock your dogs and you tell them that they're good? Okay. That's like giving um, them a jerk pop correction and giving them a cookie. Uh, we do not use any other listed training methods. I don't know what that means, any other listed training methods. So they just use shock collars? That's fucking awesome. Not. So uh, I just said, hi, Ryan. Thanks for getting back to me. I'm going to pass on this interview. I am an evidence-based trainer, and I only use force-free methods, thereby only promoting guests who are in line with my methodologies. Good luck to you. Thank you, Maria. And he just shot back to me. Good luck to you as well. Um, so I'm like, no, dude, there's no way you're coming on my show. Um, I don't, I'm not, I am not, um, promoting a person that uses shot collars or a person that it has a franchise. Anytime there's a franchise, I'm sorry. There, that's some bullshit, especially with dog training. It's no, you guys. You guys have to become really savvy when you're hiring dog trainers, okay? So I looked around a little bit here, some more, um, and I was like, um, I looked up, what is neutral? Is this sharing? Okay. What is neutral e-collar training and it just it just brought up e-collars and it came up with a little graphic here uh let's see um <clears throat> yeah the term shock collar refers to using the same thing but typically used in a derogatory manner some balanced dog trainers have made an attempt to reclaim the term Shock collar, but e collar is still the most commonly used term. Who gives a shit? You're still shocking your dog. Like, who the fuck cares? No vets don't advise them. Experts advise against them. Veterinary associations and humane association organizations have long recognized that punishment based training can be detrimental to animals. The Canadian Veterinary Medical Association position statement on training strongly discourage aversive training methods. So, I mean, I can go on and on with you guys about that. Let's just go to the graphic. 
which made me fucking laugh. Here's the graphic. Is it showing? Yes, it's showing. Let's go over this graphic. Will you do this with me? If I use a shot collar, <clears throat> I'm going to have clear communication with my animal. It gives them, gives me a tactical way to communicate with my dog, which comes more naturally, especially in moments when they are inclined to ignore you. So their methodology is to, if your dog is ignoring you, shock them. Okay. Just listen to the line of logic here, okay? Stop bad behavior. Highly, high quality e-callers give you a way to say no in a way that's meaningful to your dog. How is shocking them meaningful? How is it meaningful to a dog's thought process? How is it meaningful to learning? It's not. It could save my dog's life. If your dog is headed towards traffic, towards a cliff, or towards a wild animal, an e-collar gives you a way to stop your dog in its tracks. No, <laughs> no. There's no guarantee that, and these types of franchises and trainers that even are without a franchise will say they guarantee their training. Run if you see a guarantee. You can't guarantee behavior. Come on, give me a break. But anyway, I digress a little bit here. Um, you can you can take a risk and you think your dog is gonna stop? Okay. There's so many other things that you can do here, but I'll I'll go over that. Okay. Here's something else. Improve our relationship. Clear, consistent communication is essential for any relationship. That's exactly what the e-collar provides. What's clear is that you are punishing the dog, period. Another one, to make my dog's world bigger, a fully e-trained collar dog can go anywhere with you. The world is your dog park. That's fucking bullshit. These are the people that walk around with a robot dog, maybe off leash, but your dog's not a robot. Guess what? And hello, there are leash laws everywhere. Like, like you just think, oh, I'm just going to let my dog roam around anywhere. He's be collar trained. It's fine. Okay. And dogs aren't robots. I love that they have this because Dogs that are trained through aversive training methods like e-collars, punishment, alpha rolls, um, hitting, um, uh, shock collars, pinch collars, choke collars, hanging, whatever, okay? Whatever aversive stuff that's being done to these animals, like I just reported um, at the top of the show, that supposed dog trainer was using... These methods, maybe not a shock collar, but she was using aversive methods. And guess what? She killed the dogs. Dogs aren't robots. Even fully trained dogs can make mistakes. I'm glad they recognize that much. And bad decisions, that deer might seem worth it. E-collars provide a reliable way to communicate even when words fail. What the fuck? No! No, no, I'm taking this down because it it nauseates me. Okay. No, you don't want to punish your animal. You're not going to get reliability. There was a study years ago, uh, the New York Times did, um, and the study was done at Cornell University about e-collars, and specifically these were the electronic fences that were just, they're still promoted like crazy, but um, just bam, 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 promotion, promotion, promotion. And people were just getting these all over the place. But what wasn't being uh, shared with the public is that uh, a lot of dogs, this is all through the test. It's documented. I'm not making this up, okay? I don't make any of this shit up, okay? I'm not like 
oh, don't do this because I don't, you know, I don't feel like it's right. I mean, morally, I don't. And ethically, I don't. However, we're talking about evidence-based based methodologies, things that we know work, things that we don't, that we know harm animals, okay? And so anyway, getting back to the Cornell study about the, um, the barrier fences, the electric fences, some dogs, and in particular, it was, uh, I think it was Border Collies, the collar emits a sound when they get close, okay? To, they have a little bit of a, of a leeway, like, beep, 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 beep. Oh, I'm getting closer, not shocked yet. Well, guess what? So some dogs stayed by that beep, beep, beep sound, wore down the battery and left. And then there was also a percentage of animals that took the shock and left. And then there was a percentage of animals that um, started getting aggressive because when people approach the property and, or other, an, or when people approach the property or other dogs walk by, they would get shocked. So they're getting shocked while they're seeing a person coming onto the property. They're experiencing pain when they see somebody approaching them. They're experiencing pain when they see somebody walking a dog on uh, on a leash towards them or next to them or in front of them on the street. They're experiencing pain when they see a child. They're experiencing pain when they see a wild animal because they're getting shocked. And guess what that causes? Pain causes, at minimum, a negative it's, it's negative, right? So it's going to be paired with something that's happening that is now hurting them. That's negative. Guess what happens? Aggression happens. And people don't understand, well, why is my dog getting aggressive? You know, I mean, they were used to be great. And you start unpacking what happened. When did you get the e-call or when did you start using it? What's happening around that situation? And you tease it out and you're like, oh, well, it's duh. You started using an e-collar. And when you started using it, you started having your dog started having these behaviors. Oh, your dog escaped even though you had the electronic fence. Oh, interesting. So people are using electronics as a fail safe method. And um, sometimes shit happens and. Um, you should be teaching your dog an emergency down, an emergency come when called. You should be teaching boundaries at the front door. You should be teaching boundaries in your car um, instead of just opening your car door and your dog just runs out. How's about a nice sit stay or how's about a down stay? And then you can come out because guess what? I hooked up your leash and now we're going to walk into the house. Um, and all good things are happening in the house. You're getting rewarded. It's a great thing. You're going to get to go out in the backyard, which is fence and play. And we're going to train and play. Okay. So you need to have these behaviors in place. And I always say this, and I always have said this, and I always will say this. The biggest reason that I teach people to teach their dogs basic obedience skills, like sit down, stay, come, uh, back up, off, is those are our management tools. Those are the things you need to implement with your animals, not shocking them, not jerk popping them um, with a, you know, a corrective collar. Why? Why is this still happening? I, it blows my mind. I mean, why do humans continually want to punish whether it's other humans or, you know, animals, like we're such primates, you know, we got to hit something uh, to take up some boxing, go scream in a corner, whatever, get your rage out how you need to. Don't take it out on your animals. And I don't think that people who use electronics are bad people or people who use, you know, shock or um, whatchamacallit, uh, pinch collars or choke collars are bad people. I used to train this way, okay? I used a shock collar on my Rottweiler, okay? So here's the other thing. The other side is, so that study talked about, that study was just for the 
uh, electronic fences, right? Um, but the other thing I want you to think about is that, you know, what the study found was that some dogs were like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and run the battery down. You know, dogs are smart. They figured this shit out, right? So, for example, when you use a shock collar on your animal, let's say you're using it for, um, oh, I kind of went a little off my train of thought. Hang on a second. Let me go back. Let me go back. Yes. Okay. This is what I wanted to say to you. So these things, I'm going to bring it back up. Let me bring it back up. Come on. I want to make a point with you guys. And it's very important. This is an important point that I want to make with you guys. Um, here we go. Are you seeing this? You are seeing it. Excellent. So the point I want to make with you is that everything, clear communication, stopping bad behavior, life-saving, more freedom for your dog, um, more reliability, a better relationship. What happens when you don't have the collar? Do, 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 do. People put dummy collars on their dogs, dummy shock collars. So they're not uh, shock collars. They're just shaped and everything, and you, they just put it on them. But just like if you stop using, you know, people are going, oh, what are you chasing and training? He's such a crutch. Well, so is shocking your dog, okay? I can have the same freaking argument with you. So when you're using treats in training, the way I use them, I'm not luring my dog. I'm not bribing my dog. My dog is problem solving. I don't like lure reward train. I don't like it. People use it. That's fine. That works for them. It would work for me, but then I have to do one more thing and I don't want to do one more thing. I'm a little lazy, okay? I just, I don't want to deal with having to fade the lore, okay? And and sometimes I'll humor people and I'm like, this is why we don't do it. So I am a true purist clicker training uh, trainer. I shape behavior. I wait for behaviors to happen. I also just pick up their natural behaviors. Like a dog's going to sit so much and lay down so much. Click and reward, click and reward. It's so easy, but how do I get my dog not to rely or me not to rely on having a clicker and a tree pouch on? You know, when I go to people's houses or when I went and when I had my facility, it's like I would tell, I tell you guys this all the time. I don't walk around my house with a tree pouch and a clicker. So I then I transfer my dogs to what I call a variable training schedule. So they don't get treated every single time or, or clicked and treated every single time. It's maybe it's every other time. And then eventually I just drop out the clicker. And eventually I'm like, oh, the dog's laying down on the couch. What a good time to bring them a cookie and catch them in the act of doing it right. Guess what happens? Reliability builds. Okay. Um, you know, Troy is a good teacher for me. He brought out today. He brought out, what did he bring out? He brought out a box of tissues. He got my clean clothes, my clean shirt, and my clean shorts off of the desk. He stood on the bed and got them while I was out here. And Tammy was, uh, at, I don't know, she was brushing her teeth or something. But this is what happened. So he's still stealing stuff. Our fault, of course. Um, he brings everything to me. And he drops stuff. It takes him a minute. I get him to come over to me. I tell him to leave it and he drops it. That's it. I pet him. I didn't have to give him cookies. I didn't have my clicker. I didn't do any of that stuff. But I've built a bridge of consistency and reliability through using science, not aversives. So here's my point. I don't always have to have my clicker or my um, tree pouch or treats 
or whatever, because I've built up a relationship through a variable reinforcement system and also mixing things up, whether it's reinforcing with a toy, like Rufus was primo, you could reinforce him with a tennis ball if, if, if you wanted to. With Troy, I love on him, he loves getting his ears scratched and everything, because reality is, is that you don't always have a treat and a clicker and a freaking treat pouch on you and all this shit, okay? And I don't either, and I'm a dog trainer. It's my profession. So what I want you guys to also look at is, let me just see here. There was something else I wanted to show you. I did want to show you their website because I really think it's important that you see what I see. So let me share this with you. This is a much longer episode than I anticipated, but this is good. Okay. So this is on their homepage. I believe, yeah. It's our story. And I see this and all these dogs are sitting perfectly looking somewhere else except for this little guy right here and this little one and this one so three looking everybody else is looking somewhere else just baby looks stressed out um but these are all e-collar trained dogs right um what I, I don't need my freaking dog to sit on a tub do you I need my dog to go outside and I need my dog to, you know, uh, walk on a leash. I need my dog not to be an idiot to other dogs. I need my dog to sit and stay. I need my dog to um, comply with cooperative care when we're working on husbandry, like nail trimming. Um, I don't need my dog to sit on this. That's real cute, but I don't need that. That's not a necessity. So this is, this is my brain. This is the way it works. I'm 100% judge everything. You're telling me nothing. Telling me nothing. How many hours he spent. Um, telling me nothing. Telling me nothing. There's nothing. There's no about us. You know, 15,000 families can't be wrong. Okay, I'm not going to advertise these people. But. I want you to know that there was not one thing that said e-collar on here. Okay. There is not one thing that said we train like this. They were all about um, just marketing. Marketing, their marketing is pretty good. Marketing, 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 marketing. And honestly, you know, somebody asked me a couple weeks ago, one of my colleagues was like, hey, what do you think of this dog trainer's website? They're just starting out, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, let me look. And I looked and it was, it was good. It was the typical, uh, these days, uh, to hire a dog trainer, if you want to do it online or virtual or do, do your own coursework. Um, you go through this series of questions. It's very impersonal. Um, and it kind of, it's all AI and I'm not against AI. Um, but it's, it's just really detached and impersonal. Um, and it figures out a training plan and they're like, oh, you're going to get all this money off and all this crap. Okay. So that's great. I liked it. It was, it was okay. But again, her training, her website told me nothing about her training methodologies. Now, that being said, you guys don't look for this. I look for it. So I will always help you pre-screen a trainer if you want to, you know, if you need to train somewhere else or whatever, like do your homework. Please do your homework, okay? So let's see. We went over, we went over a lot today. This is a long episode. Some of them are short and some of them are long, but um, I just really love getting this information out to you guys. And I mean, <laughs> I know my audience size is really small, but please 
like, share, and subscribe. Let's get this information out to as many people as possible. Let's get force-free and evidence-based training out to everybody and that knowledge out. So you guys don't have to hurt your dog. You don't have to, you know, do things that you don't want to do or think that you need to use punishment because you don't. Or you know what? If you want to punish your dog, don't give them a cookie if they don't sit. How's that for punishment? That's really low level. Stop going to the highest ceiling of punishment. Stop going all the way to, I need to shock my dog. Don't do it, okay? Don't do it. Let's work on this together. Let's get this out together. Thanks so much. Hey, next week, we're really going to be talking about service dog training with my dear friend, Barb. I uh, can't wait. And our, it's going to be her and her service dog, Bogo. So, um, yeah. Stay tuned, people. Thanks so much again. I love you. Have a dog on positive day. Bye.